a power function is a function of the form f of x equals x to some power, let's call it p. We'll start off by looking at power functions where the exponent p is an integer. In this case, let's just write our function as f of x equals x to the n. We'll use n for the exponent since n is often used for integers. So let's let n equal 1, 2, 3, etc. When n equals 2, we have quadratic functions. f of x equals x squared, let's say. Now we've already calculated that the derivative of f prime of x for a quadratic is just 2 times x. Let's look at the calculation behind this to see if it will give us insight into what to do when n is an integer other than 2. All right, the derivative df dx, which if we wanted to, we could write this as dx squared dx, substituting the value f equals x squared right in the differential notation. So this derivative is the limit, as delta x goes to 0, of x plus delta x squared minus x squared. That's the change in the output of f all over delta x the change in the input. How did we determine that this formula gave us 2x, the derivative of x squared? Well, what we did is we multiplied out the quadratic. When we do this, we get x squared plus 2 times x times delta x plus delta x squared minus x squared all over delta x. The first term x squared is canceled out by the x squared that we subtract off at the end. The second term, when we divide by delta x, just becomes 2x. The third term becomes delta x. Now when we take the limit delta x goes to 0, this delta x term goes away, and we're just left with the final answer that the derivative is 2 times x. Now that was all fine and good for a quadratic, but what happens when n, the exponent, becomes larger than 2? If we repeat these calculations, let's say for n equals 3, we just need to replace these 2's with 3's. But now it's going to get a little uglier when we try to multiply out the cubic. If we did this for the cubic, it would look something like this. Our multiplied expression at the right is a bit more complicated, but let's think about what happens to these extra terms. Just like before, the x cubed, the highest order term, gets canceled out by the term at the right, which we subtract off. In the second term, the delta x's will cancel, and we'll get just 3x squared. But now we have two more terms. But notice this term is delta x squared, and this term is delta x cubed. When we divide by delta x, the first term will become something times delta x, and the second term will become delta x squared. I'll write them out exactly here. But I don't want you to pay attention to the details of these two terms. Instead, let's rewrite them as delta x times something. Or the something is just some expression, but the important part is that it's just some finite expression. It's not something that will blow up to infinity as delta x goes to zero then you can see we don't care what this something is. We're going to take the limit as delta x goes to zero, and this whole term is going to go away. And we'll, and we'll be left with the final result that the derivative is 3x squared. The main point is that when we multiplied out this cubic, we got a bunch of terms. The first term does not depend on delta x but it gets subtracted off. The second term is the term that matters because the delta x will be canceled and we'll get the important 3x squared. And the third and later terms will all go away because even after dividing by x, they'll still contain a delta x in them and so they'll go to zero in the limit. And the nice thing is that this process will work even for exponents larger than three. Let's take a look at the general case. Let's try to take a derivative of a power function, x to the n, where we'll leave n as any positive integer. The derivative 
of x to the n with respect to x. We need to use our limit definition. And when we do that, we get x plus delta x to the power of n minus x to the n all over delta x. The tricky part is this x plus delta x to the power of n. What does that look like when we multiply it out? Well, let's look at the binomial theorem. A binomial is a polynomial with two terms. Let's write it as x plus y and raise it to the power of n. The binomial theorem gives an expression for all the terms when you multiply this out. But it turns out we don't care about most of the terms. Remember when we multiplied out the cubic, the only term that mattered was the term that contained one delta x. The term with zero delta x's got subtracted off. The term with two or more delta x's went to zero even after dividing by delta x. So the binomial theorem says when you multiply this out, you'll first get a term where you multiply x by itself n times. Then you'll get a term where you multiply by x n minus one times and y once. And you can do that in n different ways. It all works out that way. So you end up getting n times x minus one times y. And then you'll get a bunch more terms, but they'll all contain at least two y's. So you'll get y squared times something. And that something will be a polynomial in the x's and y's. And here we're going to use y equals delta x. And this y squared will be delta x squared, which will still go to zero when dividing by x. So let's plug this into our expression for the derivative. So we need to multiply out x plus delta x to the n. So we'll use this expression where y is delta x, and we'll get x to the n plus n times x to the n minus one times delta x plus delta x squared times something minus x to the n all over delta x. Okay, this is looking familiar. The x to the n cancels with the x to the n that we subtract off. And when we divide by delta x, we'll get n times x to the n minus one, so delta x is cancel, plus when we cancel a delta x, we still have one delta x left times something, but delta x times something goes to zero as delta x goes to zero. So we're left that the limit is n times x to the n minus one. So we can summarize f of x equals x to the n, then its derivative df dx equals n times x to the n minus one. Or we could also write it as f prime of x equals n times x to the n minus one. Either notation. And this is how we take the derivative of a power function. Let's use this general formula to calculate the derivative for some specific power functions. If we let n equals one, then we get f of x equals x, and the derivative is one times x to the zero, which is just one. All right, we knew that already n equals two, we have our quadratic, and we get back that df dx is equal to two times x. And we can easily write out some more. The neat thing is that this formula works for any power function, not just for positive integers. We won't show that here, but in general, if f of x equals a power function x to the p for any p not equal to zero, then the derivative f prime of x is p times x to the p minus one. Or we could write df dx is the same formula, p times x to the p minus one. This works for negative powers, 
and even fractional powers. Though for those fractional powers we might want to restrict x to be positive so that our function still takes on real values. So now we know how to calculate the derivative of powers with negative exponents. Let's say we set p equal to negative 1. Now our f of x is x to the negative 1. Or we could write it as 1 over x. Using our formula, we see that df dx has to equal p. p is minus 1. So we get negative x to the p minus 1. But here we have to be careful. Our exponent p is negative 1. So p minus 1 is negative 1 minus another 1. So we have x to the power of negative 2. Or if you like, negative 1 over x squared. We can continue to other negative exponents. For x to the power of negative 2, the derivative is negative 2 times x to the power of negative 3. Again, we had to subtract 1 from the exponent, so our new exponent is negative 3. And similarly, for x to the power of negative 3, we get negative 3 x to the power of negative 4. What about the square root? f of x equals the square root of x. That's just x to the power of 1 half. This formula works just as well for fractional powers, so we can use it for p equals 1 half. In this case, df dx equals p, so 1 half, times x to the power of 1 half minus 1. Well, 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. We can rewrite x to the power of negative 1 half as 1 over the square root of x. So we get that the derivative of the square root is 1 over 2 times the square root of x.